This is a game that I look forward to every single year, and this year is no different. Despite Washington's slow start, this game is still in Seattle and it's still a clash between two very, very good football teams. I'm here to put on both squads' shirts and break this game down for you thoroughly. In three, two, one, go. Slow start for Washington. <laughs> How about a dreadful one when you're talking about their standards and they haven't figured it out yet? This is a really bad time for them to be playing against us. Doesn't matter if you're at home or on the road, we're not a team that you wanna see when things aren't clicking. After what was a poor effort in the second half of the Auburn game, which still bothers me because I feel like we outplayed them the majority of the game and should have won, nonetheless, I'm over it. We've really hit our mark. Let me give you the only real fact that you need to know. Points allowed since that game, six, three, six, seven. Points you scored against Cal and Stanford, 19 and 13. I have plenty more on my notes here, but that's all I really need to know to prove that we're going to win this game, right? You can't score enough to even think about winning this game, but then to actually consider the fact that you're up against Justin Herbert and company on the other side of the ball? Good luck, Huskies. Oh, is that what we're doing? Nitpicking and only finding the games in which our offense struggled? The two games in which we just so happened to lose? What about 47 against Eastern Washington? 52 later on. 45 against BYU. 28 against Southern Cal. When things are going, things are really going, particularly at home, which we are in this case. The Cal game was a rough one, I'll give you that, but that game was just weird in general. All the stoppage in play, it just it's just one that I'm willing to throw out selfishly. With Jacob Eason under center, we can win this game and any game. He really does take care of the football. 11 touchdowns to just three interceptions this season. 1,449 yards at the time of this recording, a 65.7% completion percentage, and eight yards per completion. Yeah, he has all the tools he needs to take care of business in this game. Much better than Bo Nix's numbers, who you lost to in week one. Yeah, but Auburn had that front seven, specifically the defensive line, to lean on when he needed to. Guess what you don't have? That. Your D almost gave up 300 yards to Davis Mills of Stanford. Your D did give up a buck 51 to Cameron Scarlett, their running back. Which on 33 carries tallies out to be 4.6 yards per carry. Mills ended up getting nine receivers involved in that game, which is something that Justin Herbert seems to do as well. And all in all, what I've seen out of Washington so far this year on the defensive side of the ball is the inability to stop good opposing offenses the way it had in the past. And since you're so high and mighty on the guy that you're rolling with under center, let's talk about the guy we are rolling with and do a little bit of comparison. Our quarterback has 15 touchdowns by air. That's four more than yours. Our quarterback has just one interception this season. That's two less than yours. Our quarterback has a 71.6% completion percentage. That's almost six percentage points better than yours. And our quarterback is throwing for 8.3 yards per completion. That's also more than yours. All of that is against much of the same opposition. And then when you throw in Auburn there on our side of things, it's uh, against better competition overall. Our quarterback has an unreal tight end option in Jacob Breland. He has 352 yards on 23 receptions and has found pay dirt five times. But your quarterback doesn't have Mr. Ahmed in the backfield. He has CJ Verdell. Not quite as talented. Ahmed is sitting on 427 yards on just 67 carries, which is a very impressive 6.4 yards per carry. And you mentioned Breland, which that's all good and well, but as a tight end, he's your leading receiver. So if we cover him up, who are you gonna go to? Our leading receiver is an actual receiver in Aaron Fuller. And since you love the comparison game so much, let me go ahead and take your tactic from you in this scenario. Our leading receiver is at 498 yards this season. That's almost 150 yards more than your leading guy. Our leading receiver has 36 receptions here in 2019. That's 13 more than your leading guy. You see where I'm getting at here? With both defenses being pretty dang good and both quarterbacks being pretty dang good, you start to look for areas where maybe there will be some other players and difference makers who can make things happen. Look, I do think Oregon is a pretty dang good team. Specifically, that offensive line in week one and really the rest of the season has proved that it is everything it is hyped up to be and then some. They are excellent. They get great push for running plays and they pass protect very, very well. I've seen Auburn with a much more effective pass rush against other teams, even Florida, than what they did against you guys. But I do think you're underestimating four things. One, the chaos of the Pac-12. Two, the genius that Chris Peterson displays. Three, the talent that is on this Washington Huskies football team. And four, the advantage that home field really does give this squad in big games like this. I think we win a huge one and it becomes a huge turning point for my Huskies this season. Go dogs. 
I think you're a little bit delirious and biased like most teams fan bases are, but since you did go ahead and pay me a compliment there, I'll go ahead and stop the taunting and rubbing it in and just get straight to the facts and end this thing. Respectfully. My Ducks win this one, not by a lot, but relatively comfortable, maybe like the 30 to 21 area. This year is just not the year for the Huskies. We're going to go ahead and really put that in stone on this Saturday. I wish you guys the best of luck. You're going to need it. See you then, buddy. Go Ducks and time. So there you have it, subscribers and potential subscribers. Seriously, make sure you subscribe right here for the most fun, entertaining, and creative college football content all season long. That's the breakdown of Oregon versus Washington. This game I am very much looking forward to. Also, just as a side note, Ducks and Huskies fans have been among my favorite of subscribers so far. You guys are very, very nice. Appreciate that. I have an actual score prediction for this game and all the best college football games of this week in this video right here. Make sure you check it out if you're an avid college football fan and you want to know what I think this week. Comment below on this game who you think is going to win, give me a score prediction, and why. As always, don't forget the why. We love substance around here. It's very important. See you guys down there and God bless.